Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Rover Product Enhancements version 5.14, Multi-Currency Support, Enhanced Security, and more, presented by Stay in Touch Implementation Consultant, Tyrus McLone. I'm your host, Aaron Fisher, the content writer here at Stay in Touch. Today's presentation will cover how you can get the most out of Rover version 5.14 product release. In this webinar, we will explore significant expansions to language translations in Rover, review changes to password requirements, identify new updates to nightly reservations in the room diary, explore multi-currency support in Rover, review new sorting criteria for groups and allotments, review changes to the deposit invoice, identify changes to the way balance is displayed in the, no, in the cancellation and no-show report, and discover the latest updates to Zest Station, including Aura code PIN code setup, guest charges posting, and manual passport entry. We will have a short Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Feel free to submit questions throughout the presentation, and we will answer them in the order they are received at the end. And that's all I have right now. Tyrus, I'm going to hand the presentation over to you. Thank you, Aaron. All right, good afternoon, everyone. As Aaron so kindly mentioned, my name is Tyrus McGlone. I am the implementation consultant uh, for today's webinar. Um, just a few things, as Aaron mentioned, we'll be going over. I am going to start with uh, the password requirements. Um, so many of you that already have accounts for Stay in Touch Rover uh, know that you are able to change your password. Um, at any given time. To change your password, you would simply go to the menu option, settings, and you will have the change password uh, dialog box. Now, one thing about changing your password is that you uh, will need to enter a new password that you have not entered uh, within the past four times. Um, so if you may have remembered your password from two let's say two times ago, you cannot use that same password. You must enter four new passwords in order to go back and duplicate something. Um, so that's the only change that we have made to the password requirement thus far. We are now checking for frequency of the last four passwords. And again, to get to changing your password, you would simply go to menu, settings, and change password. The next thing I'm going to review uh, would actually be the room diary for each hotel. Um, we now have overlap, overlapping or stacking reservations. For, so for those properties uh, that may utilize, let's say maybe a day use room, um, along with a guest nightly room, we now show the stacking functionality for that. So for an example, um, I'm here with the Hotel Kingsley. And if I go to an actual reservation, um, I'll go and type in, I believe I might have one under Aaron and Lane. All right, so I have Erin and Lane. Erin uh, and Lane here, she's actually arriving today in room 205. However, if I go back to type in a reservation under Tyron Benjamin, you'll also see that this is the day use room in room 205 as well. So this is the day use room. It checked in today and it also checked out today. Um, if I go to the menu option, front desk and room diary. I'm just going to scroll down to room 205 and you will actually see that there is stacking here listed. Um, so you'll see TB, which is my initials for Tyrus Benjamin. And then you'll also see Aaron and Lane. Um, both of these share room 205, but you can also see that Aaron is actually overlapping into the next business date, which is October 16th, just because she is a nightly reservation. Now, again, Tyrus, uh, Tyrus Benjamin is listed there as well, um, both under 205. And this is the stacking functionality that we have for overlapping uh, rooms inside of the room diary. The next thing that Rover has implemented um, is actually the group functionality, group and allotment functionality, and the sort order. Um, so in the availability calendar, many of you are probably familiar with, um, there are different functionalities to the availability calendar. If you go to the calendar on the right-hand side of the screen, the little squiggly line, if I click here, 
you have, it opens up standard defaults to the availability screen. So it opens up, of course, the occupancy, the available rooms, the room sold, non-group rooms, and then your group and allotments. Now, of course, if you just go to group and allotments tab in purple, uh, it just gives you the definite blocks that are inside of your hotel. However, we also have, if you go to the top, the availability toggle here, we also have a group screen. So if I go here to groups, you now have the availability, well, the option to see the groups that are listed here, but it's going to default to the arrival group order. So whichever group is arriving first, um, that's going to be the sort order for any group and allotments at this time. If I break down the Volvo SA Bootcamp, you'll see that the arrival date, of course, you have the contracted nights of the 12th of November, the 13th of November, and the 14th of November versus the Alpine end test. Their contract dates are not until the 15th and the 16th. So the sort order is now going to be for an arrival date for any group and allotments inside of Stay in Touch Rover. Next, I am going to discuss a language translation. Many of you have uh, inquired about this uh, functionality in this feature. Um, we've added new language translations to a few of our um, invoices. So this includes the guest invoice, the account invoice, AR invoice, and AR statements. Um, if I go to a specific bill here, so I'll go to one of the departures, and I'll just click on a reservation here. Now I'm going to go to the billing charges and open up an invoice. So the invoice, of course, is the blue button here. And you'll see that you have all of these um, bill layouts here. So you have detailed bill. But if I go to the top here, some languages, you also have German, French, Spanish, and, uh, and Swedish. So again, these bill layouts, the actual languages, they only apply to the detailed bill, detailed bill by items. Summary by charge code and pro forma invoice. Um, and again, the only languages right now are German, French, Spanish, and Swedish. And again, you can see these uh, multi languages inside of um, the account invoice, the guest invoice, uh, or even an AR statement. Next on the list for today's webinar, we're going to speak about multi-currency. Um, multi-currency has been an ongoing topic as well, along with the, the languages. Um, so to set up multi-currency, it does require a configuration change. Um, so I'm just going to go to the menu option. And of course, configurations are probably uh, managed by most of the managers at the property that have hotel admin access. But if I go down to settings and the sub menu, which is settings as well, um, the main toggle here that we're going to focus on will be hotel and staff, which is on the left-hand side of my screen. And settings and parameters. So many of you are probably familiar with this screen from the very beginning of going live with Stay in Touch Rover. Um, this is a screen that we typically use to set up your end of day, your night audit, and all of that good stuff. But if I scroll down, you're going to see um, enable multi-currencies. You will simply toggle this option on, and you have the option to select different currency values um, or different currencies, currencies that you're going to accept at your property. So there are three different things. We have a hotel invoice currency. Now, this hotel inverse invoice currency, you can only select one at a time. Um, so you can only select US dollar, European, or anything else, but it's only one um, invoice currency that you can select at one time. However, we have hotel rate currencies, which you are able to select multiple. Um, so as you can see here, I have about six of um, these currencies selected for my property for the hotel rate currency. If I scroll down, you also have hotel payment currencies. The exact same thing as the hotel rate currencies, you can select multiple. Um, so I have about six of these selected here as well. And again, if you're inside of an actual um, rate or something so if you're setting up a rate for your property a future rate if i go to the settings rates and i'll look at the bar rate which is the most common rate amongst uh, most hotels so if you're setting up a new rate or if you're just going to a current or a previous rate that's already created um, now, within that rate toggle, you have the currency, which falls underneath the charge code. 
and I can finagle this to a different currency. These currencies that are available here correspond with the currencies that I have turned on um, in the settings and parameters of Hotel Admin. All right, next on the list will be Zest Station. So for those of our for those properties that utilize our Zest Station platform, um, many of you may utilize Oracle. For those of you that are not familiar with what Oracle is, it's actually a pin code service uh, that allows a guest to enter a pin code on their door for um, access into their um, guest room door. Um, many hotels are utilizing this for common doors as well as guest doors. So to set this up, and this is something that we will also set up um, on the back end from Stay In Touch, so this doesn't require um, any changes on your end, but I will just show you where these settings are. All right, so I'm just gonna go to the Rooms tab, and you wanna see Room Key Delivery. Now we have a few options here. We have Zest Check-In, and we have Rover Check-In, as well as Station Check-In at the bottom. But the Zest Check-In, since we are speaking of the actual Zest Station, this is going to be this option here where it says Show Pen in Room Ready Email. So the intended functionality, if a guest were to um, check in or anything of that nature, or get maybe, let's say, a pre-check-in email, an email will be generated with their PIN code, which en enables them to utilize that PIN to unlock their guest room door. And again, this is nothing that the property will set up on their end. This is strictly for stay in touch to um, handle. Then we have your deposit invoice. So another change that we've also added to your deposit invoice, um, I'm gonna go to, let's see. Let's go to your rates here, your charge codes. So I'll choose an early check-in upsell. So one charge code type that we have added has been a deposit charge code type. Um, this is not currently set up in this actual Western Bay Hotel, but we have added a charge code deposit type for VAT um, invoices. Now, many of these properties that have the VAT invoices is specifically for European properties and not for the U.S. properties. So if you are if you are a European property, you will have the actual charge code type under the screen here that actually says deposit. For then this, this is only for VAT invoices for European properties. Um, the last option on this webinar today will actually be the balance display for no-show and cancellations. So for those night auditors that may run a no-show cancellation report, one thing we will show now is the actual report, which shows the balance. So the balance, of course, is pretty much self-explanatory, but any balances on that report that are in red are outstanding balances for either no-show or cancellation. And then we have balances that are in green, uh, which then will, which will reflect the zero balance for the actual guest if they have a no-show or a cancellation on that report. All right, Aaron, I believe that covers everything on today's uh, webinar from my side. Um, I'll hand it back over to you. Any questions? All right, thank you, Tyrus, for that insightful presentation. Um, I would now like to turn over the floor to questions. Remember, you can submit questions through the question box in the middle of the control panel. Um, so I'll give everyone a few minutes to type in those, a few seconds to type in those questions. All right, um, so the first question, are there any other requirements for passwords? Um, great question. Um, so password requirements, as mentioned, um, you cannot have a password repeated within the last four times. Um, one other requirement is that you will need to have at least eight, eight characters so far in your password. It does not require any special characters, um, but it, you will need at least eight characters. So, so far as, you know, dollar sign or maybe a um, pound sign or percent symbol, anything of that nature, that's not a requirement, but you must just have eight characters for that password. Okay. Um, and then will tentative groups show in the new sort order? Uh, yes, they will. Um, so, um, and if you could present 
um, share the present screen with me again. I'll yeah. All right, so if I go here to the actual groups here, I'm just gonna take one of the groups and modify them to a tentative status. All right, so I've changed the Vaho SA Bootcamp group to tentative. And again, I'm gonna go back to my availability calendar and I'm gonna select groups. And you'll see that it does still reflect inside of the actual group availability screen. And it does still have the same sort order of arrival or tentative arrival date. And it will also show the hold status there. All right, so next question, uh, what is the best way to run the deposit ledger report in order to view unused deposits? Um, the best way is just if you go to the menu option, it's just one specific report. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming you said unused deposits, correct? Correct. Um, so you have reports, new report, And if you type in deposit itself, um, you'll see the guest deposit report. So it's gonna say deposit paid on deposit due. This report alone will of course tell you who has paid the deposit, but also if you look at another report, which is called the guest balance summary, for any unused deposits, this may be your best report because this does reflect any outstanding balances for um for guests and accounts now of course outstanding balance a lot of people will consider it you know maybe a balance that the guest needs to pay you however if you have a deposit that's on your guest reservation and they have excess money out there that have it, that has not been used that will reflect as well so i would recommend the guest balance report and, along with the guest deposits um, the guest deposit balance report all right and then uh, next, will more languages be added to the translations? Uh, yes, um, we will absolutely be adding more languages in the future. Um, this does take um, uh, quite a bit of time on our end. So I would just suggest if you have any languages that you would like to see um, inside of Stay In Touch Rover, uh, definitely contact our team here and we will, you know, get to work on trying to get that implemented as soon as possible. All right, uh, so that looks like all of our questions so I'll turn it back over to me. All right, so since there are no more questions, I'd like to take the floor to offer some final thoughts. Today, we explored significant expansions to language translations in Rover, reviewed changes to password requirements, identified new updates to nightly reservations in the room diary, explored multi-currency support in Rover, reviewed new sorting criteria for groups and allotments, reviewed changes to the deposit invoice, identified changes to the way balance is displayed in the cancellation and no-show report, and discovered the latest update, updates to ZestStation, including aura code, PIN code setup, guest charges posting, and manual passport entry. With that, I'd like to include our conclude our presentation. Thank you all for coming, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to email me at erin at stayintouch.com. Thanks again.